All right, ladies and gents, uh, it is time, as Catpaw turns the town, but it is time to show you guys something that I just think the community as a whole has not really been talking about too much. Uh, it is going to feature one of the newer civilizations, which will most certainly see a nerf, okay? It's going to see a nerf, and I don't know when, and I don't know what, but the devs would be crazy not to nerf the Civ. Um, anyways, I'm actually featuring in this first game, and then we have another game to show you, and it's just going to be... A talking point, not about the other Gurjara bonuses, but about the one thing that you see a bit later on. And players, I don't think, realize how strong it is right now. So, uh, this is a 1v1 game on Arabia. It was random Civ, okay? I understand, that, like, last week or the week before, there was a video with me, and it had me playing as Gurjaras as well. So, people are going to start to say I'm a pick Siver. A pick Siver, yeah, I'm a pick Siver, a Civ picker over here. Um, at the high level, most people go random. And that's what I did here. And you can see there's a very big ELO gap between myself and Kapoch. Uh, Kapoch, uh, top 16 player in the world, per recent standings. Argentinian, good guy, very aggressive, very much try hard. Very hard to get wins off the guy. He's playing as a Sicilian. So I guess just to like break down kind of how the uh, Civ matchup plays out, in my mind, I was kind of chuckling a little bit because the Gajaras do 50% more bonus damage. And then the Sicilians resist bonus damage by 50%. So I was laughing at that. I'm like, oh, okay, well, haven't seen this Civ matchup yet. It's kind of funny how it just evens out. It just becomes a regular game, I guess. And uh, so the 50% more bonus damage is something that the Gajars have with their camels. But they also have siege elephants that attack 50% faster. So I had played a game last week where I saw those siege elephants firsthand in a game I was winning. And I was like, whoa. We've got to do some investigating. We've got to test some stuff out. So I knew up against Capwatch that, you know, this game goes on for a long time. Uh, probably not going to be able to perform quite as well as this guy with the economy, military, whatever. So in my mind, I was already thinking, let's go for something to finish off the game, at least like before mid castle age. So you've got some options, right? You can go uh, fast scout rush. The Gurjaras, if you put all eight of your sheep in here, you've got tons of food eco, plus you've got the berries. I was actually thinking, by the way, that... I think if the devs are to make changes to the civilization, that maybe they should just remove a berry bush. I think it'd make things more awkward, and then you could still keep how the sheep bonus works. But uh, while the data initially, when the first when the save first came out, suggested that this is a slow food trickle, and you are giving up 800 food, uh, everyone seems to feel like at a high level this is way too strong. People even suggesting maybe capping it to like six, six sheep or so. So I've got some nice early bonuses to work with. And I did I did make a comment to Capwatch that if I could delete this Civ, I would. And it's actually funny. Both of these civilizations, I've been quite outspoken against since they were brought into the game. But don't worry. This is not going to be like a full-on opinion on these civilization-type video. Uh, we're going to cast the game. And then I have another game to show you that focuses on elephants, not necessarily some of the other bonuses. So if you saw the Most Annoying Player of 2022 video... There, I talked about the player Beery, and so I'm going to give him credit because I, uh, as I explained in that video, I play, play the Gurjaras if someone goes pick Civ, because I'm a random Civ guy. I like that. And so if they tick off random, then I have Gurjaras selected, because with Beery existing and like Huang existing, you just never know who, they're probably going to be going for something crazy, and you don't want to go random Civ and get like Koreans against you know, some of the strats they're going for. Um, but anyway, so it was a Gurjara versus Gurjara game, which I decided, uh, wouldn't be important to show you here, but long story short, he did precisely what I'm about to try and do here, so I had learned it from the master himself, I don't know why I made that gate, it would have never forced him in towards the town center, but it did force him to back away. Alright, so here I am, I'm going up quite fast here, this is on 18 population, this is 17 villagers, plus of course a bit of boost from the sheep. And uh, I'm, I'm out and about, and I figured, you know, with Sicilians and the way they operate, they don't have any Dark Age bonuses. They, they have no bonus which can allow them to go faster up. But what they do have is they have more food on their farms. So since they have more food on their farms after their farm upgrades, and it's Catwatch, he is kind of known for heavy wall play. I figured he'd do exactly what he's doing now. So I'm looking around. And uh, more than anything, I'm just hoping to get some early damage in. With this camel. Here I am with the barracks. I'm building up towards the scout play. Which is fairly normal stuff here. 
And I realize, well, I'm probably not going to do too much damage. Unfortunately, it seems like he's walled up already. I saw the berries. I saw the wood. That was it. And honestly, very nicely timed from Cat Punch here. Uh, everything is is positioned to funnel things towards his town center. And my camel is going to loop around. Because I wanted to know if he was on gold. I kind of needed to know if he was going to be making archers or something. Here comes my stable. Yeah, he definitely should have hit the gate. But I was going to delete it if he did. Or so I'd like to think. And I'm going to get my farm, uh, my wood upgrade, and then I, okay, I guess I, yeah, the, I get the farm upgrade soon after. I didn't want to finish that farm yet. And, okay, so from my perspective, I needed to see if he was on gold. I see that he's not on gold. Now I'm going to try and escape. And Catpatch is going to be an annoying little guy over here with that scout. Pretty standard stuff so far. I add another scout. I'm just going to get some hits. Meanwhile, I try and escape with my camel, and he's walled me in. But think about how Catpatch is playing this, right? He's thinking about the long term. He's thinking about taking this to the mid game, as you should with the Sicilians. The Grajaras benefit from having that Camel Scout, which is always nice. But also having really healthy food eco. And to have this healthy of food eco, like to make a Scout also get my wooden farm upgrade off a 17 pop build. I guess it was 18 pop, excuse me. There's not many civilizations that can do that. Uh, in fact, I think the only civilization that does that somewhat consistently is probably the Mongols because of all the food income they bring in. So I'm strapped now, which is unfortunate. Also, the scout's kind of weak. I couldn't really do anything, so I'm just going to attack this wall. Force a reaction from him. Also, I'm still annoyed by this. I don't know what this freaking lady's doing over here. I had not sent a villager out there. Anyways, I try and quick wall her in, and I lose a vill. So disaster for me. I have the army to deal with his starting scout. And guess what? I lose it. So now I'm down a villager. Fortunately for me, it looks like Catwatch had some IOTC time. And then I'm focusing on home, and Catwatch, he decides to be all fancy schmancy pantsy over here. And so he makes some walls, and he's going to kill my camel so I can't run away. I realize near the end, and I'm like, oh, I'm trapped. Okay, that's a fun life. And I just go back to focusing. Okay, now here, here's where I want to pause real quick and talk like about this build. I, again, I have to credit Beery for this. And this is absolutely insane. Like, I think if anyone watching this could execute this at, like, 50%, if you're between 1,000, like, 1,400 ELO, you're going to start wrecking people. It's very similar to a Huang push, okay? So, in a normal scout build, you have two lumber camps because this lumber camp is starting to get a little little weird. Uh, the wood efficiency is getting bad. And then you have two lumber camps, and then you're seeding more farms around here, okay? The idea here, though, is you want to get to Castlate as quickly as possible. So what do you do if you want to get to Castle Age as quickly as possible? Well, you're going to use your best friend, and that's going to be the market. So I keep that 8 to 9 on wood. I've now only got 9 farms. 9 farms is not a lot. Obviously, still have the villagers on berries, and then I still have the food trickle from the sheep. And I, this game I've played so far has been... I've done nothing fancy. The nothing fancy whatsoever. He's done nothing fancy whatsoever. In a normal game, this is going to build up towards Castle Age, and then we have a whole conversation on the bonuses. I probably overmade Spearman as well. Like, I was a little concerned that he was going scouts because I'd lost my camel and didn't know. I did see he had a barracks, so he kind of mind game to me there. And what do we do? WWHD. It's not WWJD. What would Jesus do? Because Jesus would know that this is from the devil, okay? So it's WW. What would Huang do? And Huang, he says, I don't need eco. And so he uses the market. So I sell my stone because this is not going to be a boom game. I buy a little bit of food. And uh, I then sell a little bit of wood. And I'm going to click up to the castle age here. And important thing to mention. Well, actually, I should probably hold this thought. But yeah, my thought right now is to go all in. Now, in a lot of situations, it's like... Normally, you see this with a lot of knight civilizations, because knights are very good at killing villagers and killing buildings. Camels are not. So, my civilization doesn't get knights. I only get camels. And, while I do 50% more bonus damage, he resists bonus damage by 50%, which I believe means it's just like a normal camel against a knight, which I guess kind of neutralizes the bonuses for both civs. So, anyways, I'm adding the second stable. Now, with the Grajaras, you're able to make camels ahead of time if you wish to. Not something I thought about right away. And there's Catpatch's scout, and I've got two scouts, and I do not want him to see 
what I am about to do. Here I am. I'm fighting. I know he's going to bring a scout in. He's being annoying. Here I go with the villager. Now, guys, I want you to pay attention to my resources here, okay? It's very important. We're going to make some comparisons to different strategy or, I guess, a somewhat similar strategy soon. Here I am with my first batch of camels, by the way. I'm making the blacksmith because you need to have a blacksmith before a siege workshop. That's what I want to go for here. And this is what, like, no one's really been talking about with the Gurjaras. And I don't know, like, if the devs are hard at work on making changes to this civilization, I do not believe they're going to be making changes to what I'm about to show you. So it makes it interesting. Catpotch looking around. He sees the blacksmith. He probably just thinks I'm going to go camels. And knowing Catpotch, he's probably just going to go knights, monks, and he's going to boom. Sicilians can build their TCs really fast. And if they can build their TCs fast, then he can get a boom lead because I have already sold my stone. Trying to be a nerd with this scout. A scout's going to go down, and here I am. Now, this is where it gets really important. So I, I don't even have this like fully figured out yet. I'm still stuck in the mindset of, if I go forward Siege Workshop, I need wood gold, okay? What I'm about to do can easily be so much stronger. Because it, the, the tough thing about going Siege and Knights or Siege and Camels typically is you need a lot of food, gold, but also wood. And with the cost of these elephants, you it, it costs food and gold. Now, that is a downside in some cases because spending a lot more food and gold is tough to get in like later stages of the game when you're spending a lot of on upgrades but here come the armored elephants and so as i clear this up i actually lost some hp on a camel i am making an armored elephant now the armored elephant is freaking bonkers again the 50 percent thing I, we've talked about it with other things i need to show you this and then i have another example so here i come you do 50 percent more damage with these things okay I'm being told it's also not normal damage. Thank you for doing the math on that. So here I am. Now it's a palisade gate. So it's nothing that's too excited about. But here we go. Th these things feel to me like siege rams. Catpotch is in the next age. He's making knights. If this was two castlade rams, I'd have no chance. Regular castlade rams, zero chance. Maybe with Celts. We'd have to do some testing. I'm all in. I'm sending camels forward. I'm sending my spearmen in. I want to take out that TC. Now I want you to watch this. Okay. Catpoach is doing everything right. He's adding a monastery. He's adding knights. Watch how fast this TC goes down. <laughs> it's, it's two siege units. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so fast, man. It's so fast. Now, here, obviously, I need to focus down those knights. I'm also looking with my scout to see if he adds the monks. He's trying to repair it. But I just beat him to the punch here. Again, it helps that you can produce in uh, in your camels in the feudal age too, so I can get a jump start on the units. I swear this civilization is like is giving so many people nightmares. It's got so many amazing bonuses that flow together. And now it's not Kelp ETC, as our friend Huang says so much. It is instead, as that scout snipes the monk, it is Gurjara ETC. Guys, this is insane. His TC's gone already. Now, I mean, he can't produce a lot of army. I'm not worried on killing Vils, by the way, because if I kill his army, I win the game. Then those villagers are going to die anyway. So you don't want to waste time. It, just to play safe sometimes, you don't necessarily want to end up going for the army, or, or sorry, for the villagers and then losing your army. Anyways, uh, I ate his TC. I now ate his monastery. And Capwatch says, GG, nice civ. And then Nikov told me later, go to Capwatch's stream. And I can't speak any Spanish, but there were a lot of uh, words that I understand are uh, swear words in Spanish and a lot of complaining about the Grajara civilization. And to be fair, I recognized at the start of the game, I said, what, I said I would delete this save if I could. And he said, me too, right? So a little bit of salt there. Guys, I don't feel like I did anything fancy here. The elephants are absolutely broken. It's insane. And again, if I if I actually set up my eco a little bit better, I don't need this much wood. That's the beauty of it. Like, I don't need 12 on wood. I could have, like, 7 on wood, and I could have more farms, and then I could have even more camels and more upgrades and more elephants because you just need to have food gold for your siege and also for the camels. So anyways, I wanted to show you this, but this is not, like, the meaty part of this video, okay? 
you guys are like, all right, that's cool, T90. You're just like trying to brag. You beat Cat Butch. Oh, what a bragging caster. You know, you didn't used to do this back when you were. You guys are starting to feel like that. I get it. So I have another game to show you. It's a more extreme example. And trust me when I say it's freaking awesome, okay? Um, and again, I think what makes this exciting for people is the fact that this has not been the discussion. Okay, so here we are. Everything looks good. All right, so this is the next game, all right? And what makes this exciting is the fact that everyone's been talking about this Ravamsha Rider, which, is, which makes sense. The Chakram, the bonus damage on the Camels, the Eco. There's so many things that the Gurjaras have. Shout out to Bengalis and Dravidians, by the way. I have not forgotten about you. But you just we're not talking about the elephants. So what do we have here? Well, we've got some high-level players. So we've got Tato in the blue. Tato is playing as the Portuguese. And then in the green, we've got Dow playing as the Gurjaras. Now, again, normal game, you're thinking Gurjaras. Oh, they're just gonna, they're just gonna boom and go camels or whatever. And on the other side, you guys might not know these players quite as much, but we have the Illusionist. So, uh, th this guy's top 100. He tends to play a lot of arena, so you could consider him a clown. And then he's teamed up with a guy. He's not top 100. He's like top 200. But this guy actually played in tons of community games in the past. He actually has really risen on the ladder. I actually met him on the ladder last week. I believe he's a German player. And uh, used to be uh, Singularity or Slingularity. The guy's been around a long time. So anyways, I want to say like top 300 in the world, top 100 in the world. Specialists on more closed maps. They don't play a lot of open maps. So if Tato and Doubt are full-on trolling, right? If they're going for something that shouldn't work at all, they're, they're not going to have a chance against players of this quality. So it is funny. I did obviously watch through this recorded game. We're actually going to speed through some of this because it is Dark Age on Arena. But they know each other, and they queued up, I guess, solo. Maybe they queued up as a team. I'm not really sure of the story there. But Singularity says Civ pick is little, for little girls. I'm not Morg. So he probably went random Civ. Morg is an Arena player, so they know him. And uh, I, I do know for a fact that Tato and Doubt had actually chosen this civilization with a plan in mind. Okay. So, Singularity then says, how do we win? 11. Well, Italians aren't the worst. Italians, it's cheaper to go to the next age. They could build up towards lots of Genoese crossbowmen, bombard cannons, and arbalest. Pretty good archer civilization. And Illusionist says, I go unique unit, which would be Janissaries in this case, which I also think is a really solid play with the Turks. And then Singularity is just saying, hey, I'm going to boom up, go for some eco is obviously a little dangerous versus the Portuguese if the Portuguese were to go for organ guns. And I know I would be really paranoid about that because it is Tato and Doubt playing team games together. They're normally not just going to boom and be casual. But if they do go all in and then this person has a lot of economy, you know what you can do with economy on a closed map. So anyways, we're building up towards some exciting stuff. And Singularity says, first Tato, or two, you protect me six. So he's like, hey, if I if I can keep my eco alive, I can dominate. You protect me with your unique unit. And this is a funny exchange, actually. Illusionist says, trust him. And Singularity says, good story when I'm 24 pop. Yeah, Tower Rush would have to come way earlier. I do agree with Illusionist's point, though. I think if you want to stop the organ guns from coming, one of the best strategies might be to Tower Rush. But it is too late. So again, the Gurjaras, the, the sheep inside the mill. He also, there's nine over here for doubt. So I think he received one from Tato. I should have paid attention to that. Not to mention, it's not just nine, but you've also got five cows. So the bonus does add even more food for cows, since cows have more food than sheep. So doubt is going for a lightning fast castle age here. And there's a stable for him, and there's a market. So I'm sure everyone's thinking, what on earth are these guys going to do? Gurjara's Portuguese not really seen as a stack that is common. Gurjara's obviously being a bit new. But you guys already know, you already have an idea of what we're going to be talking about here. That's why I'm speeding up towards it. But trust me when I tell you it's worth the wait. In terms of builds, everything's perfect for, so far for Illusionist and Singularity. The Castle Age uptime is going to be great for him. His boom is going to be solid. The castle timing should be really solid for the Turk player. As Illusionish has fast in from him, and he says maybe. So I think they're confused by Tato's late-ish uptime. 
This is rather late compared to a normal build, but I think Tato's just going... Like, he knows it's going to take Doubt a little bit of time to get the elephants out. Trust me, this is crazy. Okay, so I also love the control here. This is an important aspect of this game. So Doubt and Tato have their scouts together. And they're protecting the this area in the middle of the map. And the others are going to be scared to move out because they lost some HP. And because there's a camel out there. So they're just going to sit behind their walls. There's a town center to boom. There's a town center to boom. Doubt's not booming. Okay, he's not booming at all. This is kind of an all-in play from him. He's going to add some monks, probably for relics. And here comes the first armored elephant. And there goes the second siege workshop. Doubt right now has five farms, okay? That's it. Five farms on arena. Now look at this economy. We're going to have farms everywhere. And there goes Tato building up a castle. All right, so we're going to slow it down now. So this is the illusionist point of view. He doesn't see anything. It's the same point of view as his teammate, obviously, because they have cartography now after the market. Keep an eye on those vil counts, though, okay? Because Singularity is going for a really big boom. Doubt currently, and you can keep track of the count right here, if I'm not showing it, is about to have three armored elephants. He has had to seed a lot more farms. Again, the beauty is, Doubt doesn't have to have a ton on wood here. He doesn't need to have, like, an all-in wood count with the gold that you would normally have. And the reason Tato is so late, by the way, is you've got the second castle now timed. So he's going all in army, and they just want the timing to be right. Doubt, meanwhile, is snagging the relics. So it's 70 eco versus 65. Military's 9 to 5. Not really a big deal. Illusionist is talking about a relic. Here come the Janissaries now. So this is Illusionist. No, he really wants control. This is a guy who loves his arena maps. Turks are all about their numbers. And then Singularity singles, and this is a, a great job from Illusionist to be able to kill the monks. Two monks down for doubt. Rather unconvincing, I'd say, because they don't have army, right? But Singularity signaled, sing, single area, signal area, and whatever. Um, and he said double organs. So now he knows he's under a lot of pressure. Watch this gate go down. This gate melts so fast. This is a Castle Age unit. <laughs> Bye. In the amount of time it took Singularity to type out help, he lost his gate. There's five elephants, and there's two more on the way. So obviously he does have no army, so these Janissaries have to come over, which is a little awkward because they have to run past the Siege Workshop. But I just want you to watch this. <laughs> it's insane. For all the other things people are talking about with the Gurjaras, it's kind of sad. Like... You don't even need to send all of them after the TC. You're going to take it out before Loom even completes here. This is insane. No unit in Castle Age besides petards, which explode, can take out buildings like this. And even still, you obviously would take the elephants because the elephants can destroy everything. Just like that, what's it been? A minute. The gate is down. Two TCs are down. And now he's going double siege workshop to get something out. And he's not even going to have time to make the siege. This is ridiculous. And here comes Morg. Like, Morg's help is about as fast as he could possibly help. So he's sending what he can. And then Doubt's just like, oh, okay. Well, I'm going to send my elephants, my camel in after your siege. Tato helps out. Morg gets here. But Tato's got enough working guns to maybe hold it off. And there's just no way. These things are so tanky, right? 200 HP. This feels like there's no way for Singularity to be able to keep the town center up. Overall, if you're looking at the stats, Tato's team is still behind in Eco. Obviously, in terms of efficiency, though, is looking really, really good for Tato and Doubt. But you're thinking, okay, this is an all-in push, as Doubt takes out the mining camp for some reason. This is an all-in push, so if they're able to just stabilize, they could hold, possibly, right? Here go the elephants. A lot of them are weak. There's no more army from Tato now. And Singularity, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the, okay, he does keep the TC up. So full credit to him, he's at 36 villagers, he survives. So again, like, they've defended from that, right? So this should be fine. Tato's all in. I mean, he's got organs, but he doesn't have that many organs. He's got 12. There's 15 army now for Illusionist. Remember, Illusionist spent that whole time running over here. And now Dutch is going to go for him. <laughs> and now Dutch is going to switch sides. So he's been making more elephants this entire time. 
He's not booming, right? He does have a really good one town center economy. And Singularities is so slow to help Eleven, so he's like, wow, I really could have used some help earlier. And now these Janissaries are probably hearing word from their base and freaking out because they know what just happened to his teammate is about to happen to them. Or him, I guess. So here comes more elephants. You've got 10 of them now. And I I was thinking when I saw this that Dow would honestly just go directly in for the castle. And here they go. So let's see how fast. Now, to be fair, you do have a lot of them. They're not the cheapest thing in the world. There's nine of them. One, two. It's not, it didn't actually do damage. Three. So the other shots didn't actually do damage for some reason. He just got underneath the town center and three shot at a town center. <laughs> like, what? Okay, here he goes again. Now they tank a lot of damage. Here he goes. Good luck repairing this. Goodbye to your town center. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> this is not natural, okay? That's the point I'm trying to make. Like, this is not... It doesn't feel like the same game. It doesn't feel like Age of Empires 2. It feels like something completely different where the rules are different and the situations are different. The damage is absolutely bonkers and nobody's been talking about it as Illusionist resigns and the game ends, his castle is about to melt. No one's been talking about the elephants because everyone's talking about everything else that Gujaras have. So I wanted to show this to people because, well, for two reasons. There's a very good chance that Gujaras see a nerf of some kind. If they don't, I think a lot of people are going to be very upset in the competitive scene. So, if you happen to be one of those people that wants to test out some crazy OP things before they're fixed, maybe this is the time for me to make this video, right? Um, I, I really like to be able to look back years later and say, oh my god, remember that, and then be able to reference it to people. And I would have been upset if I didn't get to show this to you guys. But like, the other reason is that it's just absolutely insane. Right? Obviously, you know, I, I truly don't think, if I were to say right now, whenever that new patch comes, I truly do not think they're going to address the elephants at all. There's a lot of crazy strats you can do with these Gurjara elephants. Yes, other aspects of the Civ is strong, but I'm curious on everyone's thoughts on that because it was wild. Again, it's not like these two are complete noobs. Illusionist, his top 100, plays a lot of arena. Singularity, you know, maybe he needed to pick Civ, right? Maybe Italians didn't get to shine. Maybe he could have Tower Rush Tattoo and it would have changed things there. I still felt like he did okay. He actually had more villagers in this game. It's just that his teammate was about to be absolutely dead. Great coordination from Dalton Datto. Uh, again, I can't wait to see what people have to say about this. It's nuts. Now, I did have a Nikov quote, okay? And Nikov said, there's no reason that Gurjara should get Siege Rams in Castle Age. So Nikov, now, he's a bit more outspoken than some other players. Nikov, pro player, basically saying that this feels like Siege Rams to him, stronger than Siege Rams. And honestly, it felt as strong as Siege Rams to me. You're only in Castle Age. And again, I think the beauty, which I think in some cases can be negatives, but when you figure it out and remember that it costs food and gold, it'd actually be quite nice, like I showed you in the first game, to combine camels with the elephants because you just need the same resources for both unit types. Um, wow. Okay. So, actually, someone did the math for us. We'll see. I, I can't fact check this math. I guess you guys know that uh, I'm a mathematician. But John says, T90, I did the math. Siege Ram does 200 damage with a 5-second reload time. Gurjara Armored Elephant does 113 damage with a 3-second reload. Siege Ram, 40 damage per second. Armored Elephant, 37 damage per second. And that's not even Siege Elephants. Siege Elephants would do 52 damage per second. So... According to my viewer here, these things are basically on par with Siege Rams. You get them in Castle Age, and they belong to a civilization that already feels top five on Arabia, at least, before bringing Siege into the equation. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but it's so strong. <laughs> it's so strong. It's ridiculous. Uh, I could bring up other Nikov quotes as well, where he's like, I don't know who playtests these civilizations. How do people think of this stuff? But man, is this it bonkers right now. But I hope people enjoy it. I hope the math brings some greater perspective. Um, I just, it's been bothering me all week that we and I and others haven't been talking about the elephants. So thank you, Tato and Doubt, for showing how strong those elephants are right now. And we'll see what the future holds. 
Uh, hopefully, it was an entertaining game. Hopefully, hopefully, if you're out there, this doesn't affect your day-to-day too much playing Age of Empires 2 because I know there's a couple people out there who are going to be inspired to do this. And let's be honest, I can't even blame them. 